Shame kept me silent from my rape. Shame kept me silent from being sexually abused because I thought that that's what I deserved. At just seven years old, Polly Wright began carrying a secret. When your innocence is taken from you at a very young age, something breaks inside of you. And I believed it was my fault. Little girls are not made for sex. And that was only the beginning. Polly was too ashamed of what happened to ask for help. She couldn't trust anyone except herself. Started dabbling in drugs and alcohol myself uh, when I was about 11, and that just continued down a really bad path and a bad spiral. During a drug deal uh, when I was 14, um, I was the payment for drugs. I wasn't worth anything, um, just a bag of pot. So the fear was terrifying. Tired of being used for sex, Polly saw an opportunity to turn the tables on men by dancing at a strip club. For once, she didn't feel the need to be ashamed. Went there and just really had the sense that I would actually be able to control these men, that this is my chance to be able to tell them, you know, you can touch me or no, you can't. And if you do, you're gonna pay me for it. I'd have to be drunk to dance. Then I would dance and I'd be wasted. And then I would leave and I would go home with some guy or just go home and drink till I'd pass out. For Polly, the money was good. But after a few years of the lifestyle and sleeping with countless men, the shame came back. It is like a poison that just sits inside of you and just rots every part of your soul. And it, it compounded so much where I would, you know, start having thoughts of death. I, I just, I didn't want to live anymore because what's the point? After dancing one night, Polly sat in her car with a gun on her lap and thoughts of suicide on her mind. I took the gun and after just all those years of just not thinking that I'm worth anything to be alive, I um, drove around with the gun in my, head, my lap with every intention to take my life. Polly didn't pull the trigger that day. She quit dancing, checked herself into rehab, and moved out of state trying to run from her problems. She even met a man and soon got married. And within nine months of meeting, we uh, got engaged, got pregnant, moved our wedding up, and ended up having twin baby girls. Polly tried her best to be a normal wife and mother, but was still haunted by the shame of her past. Having the realization of what the abuse had done with me, you know, I just really stuffed that as far back as possible and thinking that if I don't talk about it, if I don't um, deal with it, it's, it's not gonna come up. But what that did in my marriage with my husband is it would go where I couldn't even give myself to him. I didn't wanna be touched. I couldn't have sex. And at home, I can't seem to even know who I am. And that depression, it, it's so self-consuming that you can't even give yourself um, to, to, to love properly. After years of the shame and after years of the lies, Polly's husband encouraged her to go to church. I'm sitting there and the women walk us through this uh, exercise. So we're picturing Jesus and I'm picturing him and I am taking my hair and with my tears, washing his feet, but hearing his voice saying, you are worthy. You are my daughter and everything in your past has been forgiven. And I love you. And that broke me. And I got up from that because I couldn't, I couldn't sit at his feet anymore because I did not feel that. I did not feel worthy for his love. But that started Polly on a journey, one she had never been on before. And one by one, the lies and the shame she lived with all of her life began to fall. I'd never thought I was worthy of anything to have love, to have this beautiful family, to have a marriage that's worth fighting for, um, worthy to be loved, 
and to know what true love is. I never thought that. So that word would take me to my knees. And when Christ held my face and said, you are worthy, you are a worthy daughter of a king, and I love you, it sped up time so much when I started capturing those lies that I was dirty um, because of all the sex I had and all the men that I let touch me. And God would say, you are pure. You are a pure daughter and I purify you. There is no other freedom. Nothing can give you freedom like that. And there is really, for me, no words for it because it is, it's beautiful. It's beautiful.